What's up guys, this is Brett here from brettdev.com coming at you once again from Chiang Mai in Thailand. And I know I've already done one of these videos, but um, it's been a while and I'm kind of making this as I've been motivated to do so through seeing other people making videos like this and no one person in, in particular. There are a bunch of people that make cost of living videos in Chiang Mai. So I'm back again in this video and I'm gonna give you an actual breakdown of the cost of living in Chiang Mai. Basically all over YouTube, you'll find all different videos of people claiming you can live in Chiang Mai on $300 a month, $500 a month, $600 a month, $1,000 a month. And what has really inspired me to make this video is a lot of it is just complete bullshit and people are lying to you and it's pissed me off really because you guys are watching these videos uh, you're getting input from people that are already living in this location perhaps you don't already live here and you guys are trying to plan for when you do live here and what these people aren't telling you when they make these videos in order to get views on YouTube is the actual real cost of living in Chiang Mai the cost of living in Chiang Mai if you don't want to travel halfway around the world and live like a homeless person people are also not telling you about the hidden costs involved in living in Chiang Mai as well things such as visas uh, which are very important that everybody has to have and you have to pay for and it's not just the visa fee that you have to pay for it's the trip out of the country and everything else now all of these things add up and they all add on to your expenses so just watching a video of a guy going and getting a meal and saying oh this only cost me a dollar look I live on a dollar a day um, is completely false it's completely misrepresenting so in this video I'm actually gonna break down figures um, I've gone over them roughly in my head bare minimums here guys so this is the absolute minimum you should be thinking about spending and at the end of the video I'll, I'll give you a buffer of how much I feel like you should put on top of this figure that we get to um, but this is not a video that's going to show you how you can live on $300 a day because that is simply false information so I've got my phone with me and I've broken this down and I'm going to put the figures on the screen. So let's go through it step by step so you can really understand the costs, the bare minimum costs of what you're going to face if you do come to Chiang Mai to live um, for a period of time. And this is based upon if you want to live here for, say, a year in, in, in Thailand. $600 is at, at this present time, at the date of publication of this video, is 21000 700 baht so people are claiming that you can live on 21,700 baht people that are claiming you can live on $300 are claiming you can live on half of that which is like 11,000 baht a month so let me just break down what exactly your visas will cost you if you live in Chiang Mai assuming that you are on tourist visas and assuming that you're doing visa runs as a tourist, that is a run back and forth to Laos because you must leave the country and go to a country where there's an embassy. These are going to be the costs involved in you getting a tourist visa every three months. Firstly, you're going to have to go from Chiang Mai to Udon Thani, which is the border city in Thailand, which borders Laos. And um, it's where you cross over into Vientiane, the, the capital of Laos to visit the Thai embassy and get your visa. So flights to Udon Thani and back are 2,000 baht for a return, and you can book those with Nok Air. And you can get them cheaper, but realistically, 2,000 baht is a good price, 1,000 baht there and back. If you, make it, if you get a deal, you may be saving 500 baht at best. And you can get an overnight bus to Lao, but that still costs you about 800 baht, so you're only, you're only shaving off 400 baht. If you're gonna do a visa run to Lao from Chiang Mai, it's worth just flying for the sake of 400 baht. So you've got 2,000 baht there. When you get to the border of Laos, you're gonna to need to pay 1,500 baht to cross the border into Laos. Once in Laos, you're going to need to stay two nights because you're gonna to need to put your passport in at the embassy and pick it up the next day. And you won't have time to make it back for your flight home. So two nights in a hotel, let's say you stay in a cheap hotel at 750 baht per night, you're looking at 1,500 baht for your hotels. Getting from the airport to the border, from the border to the embassy, from the embassy to the hotel, this all costs money. Mini buses, taxis, tuk-tuks. Um, I think it's about 200 baht, 200 baht um, in the mini buses from the airport to the border, etc. But let's give it a round figure, about 1,000 baht for the couple of days that you're in Laos 
um, expenses on top of your flights and that's for um, taxis, tuk-tuks and what have you. Once you're in Laos, the cost of the actual visa is a thousand baht. So you have to pay that to the embassy. And then when you come back to Thailand, you, your visa is only good for 60 days. Then you need to go to the Thai embassy and you need to extend it for a further 30 days. And that's 2000 baht. You do this four times in a year if you're doing single entry visa runs. And that amasses to a total of 36,000 baht in a year. If you do an education visa in Thailand, which also lasts a year, uh, it's a similar price. You still have to pay for your extensions at the embassy. You still need to go to Laos to activate the visa. And I did the maths on the education. It works out about 31,000 baht for the, over the course of a year. So there's not a huge saving there. So let's just go with the tourist visas at 36,000 baht. That means each month you're going to, if you break it down over 12 months, each month 3,000 baht of your supposed 11,000 you can live on is already gone on your visa. Now, that's something not a lot of people cover, not a lot of people talk about, but that is what it actually costs for your visas. Okay, so let's break down the monthly expenses. We already know there's 3,000 baht for the visas. Um, let's say you rent a condo. Now, let's say you get cheap rent on a condo, uh, 5,000 baht uh, is a conservative number. Um, you could find slightly less and you could pay way up there, way more. Okay, so let's just say you're living cheap, 5,000 baht on your rent. Um, let's say your electricity bill is 1,500. Um, because I've had I've had condos where it's cost me 4,000 baht where the aircon unit has just been terrible and some months here where I am now it cost me 800 baht in the winter when I hardly have it on so let's just say 1,500 for electric and then you have to pay water on top anywhere from like 300 to 500 baht so let's just say 300 for water already we're nearly at that 11,000 so we're at 9,800 baht this is 282 dollars and we haven't even eaten yet. So obviously as a human being, you're going to need to eat food to survive. Um, and most people will eat a minimum of about three meals per day. One of the great things about Thailand is the food is really cheap. So let's just say you only ate Thai food and you ate three meals a day. I live in a Thai neighborhood and the Thai food around here is on the cheaper end because it is predominantly where Thais live. And you can get a meal here for about 30 to 50 baht on the cheaper side of things. Some parts of the city, it's more, you know, some parts of the city, you're gonna be paying 60 to 80 baht, maybe a bit more for like a Pad Thai and, and Thai food, especially if you're living like in the old city. So just for the sake of this video, let's just say you're spending 40 baht a meal. It's 120 baht for three meals throughout the day. And you're gonna be doing that for 30 days. And it's 3,600 baht for food. And that is if you only eat Thai food. So no other food, just rice, chicken, pad thai, noodles, soup. Uh, it can get very, very fucking boring um, if you decide to live off of that. Thai people do it because they're used to it. If you're coming from another country, you're gonna wanna mix different foods, but we'll get to that in a while. So we've got your food established. You might wanna have a drink as well. Um, that's not water throughout your entire time, entire year in Chiang Mai. So let's just say you have a can of Coke a day. Uh, it's about 20 baht for a can of Coke. Let's say you have one a day, you've got a 600 baht on top of that. So with all our utility bills, with our food and our one can of drink a day, uh, we're already at 14,000 baht. That's $400. That includes our visas because we don't want to leave them out because you have to have one. Now you need to start thinking about getting around. So you don't just want to be sat indoors all day, right? You're going to need some kind of transport. Um, you could get Uber, you could get taxis. Now that will be more expensive than what I'm going to propose in this video, but let's just say that you rent a motorbike. So for a motorbike rental, you're talking about 3,000 baht. You can get them cheaper, maybe 2,500, but let's just say 3,000 baht for a motorbike and to put fuel in the bike, you're talking about 250 baht. Now we're at $500. Okay, so we're getting very close to 600. We've gone way past the, the bullshit of $300 a month. And this is 17,250 baht. If, if you do come to Chiang Mai and you do decide that you wanna live um, pretty much on nothing um, and absolutely scrape by, by the skin of your teeth, um, then yeah, this is where we're at now, 500 baht 
five hundred dollars sorry um, but with, with that you can forget having a social life of any kind um, this is literally survival so for five hundred dollars you can survive and have transport and a roof over your head um, I would not recommend coming to Thailand or coming to Chiang Mai to do that let's say you don't just want to survive on the absolute bare minimum which I strongly suggest you don't um, let's say you want to eat some Western food okay well a Burger King costs you 250 baht for a meal let's say you have one of those a week that's an extra thousand baht let's say you want to go out and socialize with some friends and, and drink some beers so beers in the bars in Chiang Mai cost about 100 baht let's say for example you go out once a week and you buy five beers you're talking about 2,000 baht minimum um, some beers are more expensive than that if you drink like vodka and, and things like that it's about 150 um, a drink so you're looking at 2,000 baht minimum if you went out and socialized drank five beers a week then you're gonna need to get home because you can't ride your bike when you're drunk um, well you can but then you'll be stitched up for even more money by the police so you're gonna need to get a tuk-tuk home let's say let's say you live inside the city a tuk-tuk um, from the clubs from the, from the area where the bars are 200 baht at night maybe a little bit more let's say 800 baht in a month for you to get home after your drunken nights out now we're at six hundred dollars so twenty thousand baht twenty thousand eight hundred baht well obviously there's we've just covered main things that you're going to need but there's also always hidden expenses that you're not going to think about like for example your laundry um, if you do your laundry once a week and you do it yourself you buy your own washing powder you go to the laundry machines it's going to cost you about 200 baht over the course of a month to do your laundry uh, you're going to need toiletries to keep yourself clean um, i mean i spend about a thousand baht on a pack of razors um, but what I, what I spend in razors i save in haircuts right so but let's let's just say you, sp you spend a thousand baht a month on toiletries as well because these are things that you 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 have to have obviously that included we've surpassed six hundred dollars uh, we're now at 22,000 baht, $635. As you can see guys, living on these silly sums of money is really impractical and essentially is going to leave you living like a homeless person in a foreign country, which is not only disrespectful, um, but it's, it's not good for you either, or it probably wouldn't be good for your mental state or your well-being. And I really would recommend against it. Um, I'll cover just a couple more expenses just to speak to the people out there that are like want to do the digital nomad thing and things like that and want to know where the costs are involved there as well. So if, if you are a digital nomad and you want to come to Chiang Mai to bootstrap and, and, do, and explore the coffee shop scene and stuff like that, we're already at 22,000 baht with a bit of a social life, a Western meal once a week. The co -work, if you want to join a co-working space like Pun Space, uh, I think Pun Space is 3,500 baht for the month. And let's say you want to have a cup of coffee um, or two a day. Uh, a coffee in Chiang Mai is between 50 and 100 baht. So let's just say you drank two a day. You're talking about 2,250 baht a month for coffee. So that's, that's over 5,000 baht there just for co-working cafe and coffee, right? So I haven't included internet either in this list. So if, you, if you're living in your condo, you're probably going to be paying 300 baht for the uh, Wi-Fi if the, if the condo provide it, um, or if you need high-speed internet, you're probably going to be paying like 600 baht and up for your for your own line. Telephone not included either. Um, you can get I, I only spend to be honest about 200 baht a month on my phone bill, um, but that go if you want uh, lots of data, lots of download. I think 12 gigabytes is about 800 baht for your telephone contract. So telephone and internet excluded. Uh, we've got our social life, we've got all of our expenses, we've got our coffee, we've got our digital nomad co-working space. We are now at 27,750 baht and that's $800. So let's say you budget for $800. What happens when, you, when your computer breaks? Or what happens when you need to buy some new clothes, when the shoes fall off your feet? Or when you need to fly home to see a relative or a family member if you are only budgeting eight hundred dollars that's going to take an enormous chunk that's going to be almost like an entire month's worth of living out of 
what you have. So you need to allow for more than that. Um, some people budget for $1,000 a month. Now, the expenses of actually living here, if you go over what I've just covered, can be done on $1,000 and maybe leave you some change to spare. But realistically, if you want to live comfortably in Chiang Mai and you want to spend without having too much worry about what you're spending on, I would say you should have at least $1,500 and that will allow you to save some money because you really do need to be saving money when you live in a foreign country and you're far away from home. You never know when you're going to need to get a flight home. Um, and if you're not earning $1,500, get by on a thousand but make sure you have some money saved in the bank like a, a few grand in the bank in case you for emergencies like because you're, you're out you're out you're out in the uh on the other side of the world depending on where you're coming from and there's no social security the thai government aren't going to bow you out you know so i hope you find that video interesting guys now i've made it in response to all the other videos i've seen and this is a clear and honest breakdown and if you thought you could get my in Chiang Mai on $600, I'm not making this video to like try and deter you. Um, I just want you guys who have faith in watching these videos and hopefully trust me a little bit to be secure when you do come out here. I don't want you to come out here under the false illusion that you can live for $300 and then as soon as you get here you say, what the fuck, I have budgeted $300 a month and all my money's gone in a month. That's, and that, that is really... Um, that's, that's unfair for people to be making videos like that. They really should not do that because it's just misleading you guys who are trying to make sensible plans and budget sensibly for a move to Chiang Mai. If you like the video guys, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you want to know how much things cost in Chiang Mai, maybe something that I haven't covered in this video, just leave a comment below. Maybe there's something that caters to your lifestyle and not mine that I just didn't think to include. Maybe I'll help you there. And um, until next time, guys, this is Brett from brettdev.com, and we're out. Peace.